Hi everyone and welcome back to the Fandom Report. I am your host, Catherine Mora, aka Miss Catherine Mora, and we have the lovely Alex joining us again. Hi, Alex. Hi, I'm glad to be back. Yeah, I'm so glad that you're back. And again, we'll be talking about House of the Dragon, the entirety of season two, especially the finale last night. Um, well, last night because we are currently filming it Monday, Monday afternoon. Yeah, Monday mm -hmm. afternoon, the day after. Um, so if you have not seen the finale yet, if you're still catching up on House of the Dragon, pause the podcast, watch it, then come back. But yes, Alex, welcome back. Thank you. I'm pumped to talk about this because last night was intense. <laughs> yes, last night was very interesting, for lack of a better word. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, let's just go right into it. So finale last night, first thoughts. Okay. So I am going, I feel like I'm going to have the, um, everybody's going to be mad at my opinion. I loved it. I deeply yeah. loved it. I know that there was not a lot that happened. I know we didn't have a lot of action. No dragons died. Like things didn't happen on the big scale, but I loved all of the little moments to set up for season three. Yeah. No. I, and the thing is, I agree with you. I will say there were. Because I, I was thinking about it a lot. I was like, okay, it was a slower season. And we talked about this, I think, in the last time we spoke about House of the Dragon on the podcast, is that when you look back at, like, Game of Thrones, for example, some of the best moments, in my opinion, was, like, the plotting and the talking scenes. Like, yes, some of the action is phenomenal, but what made Game of Thrones Game of Thrones was... It's not exposition, but like the dialogue, the interactions between the characters and House of the Dragon, it's season two was kind of following in those footsteps in that they were putting all the pieces in place so that once we do go to season three, it's like just it's going to be like all insanity. It's, it's going to be all, all out battle. of the table. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be all. Someone said that season two is a trailer for season three, <laughs> which I thought was kind of accurate in the sense that like it was all set up. It was all set yeah. up for season three. We know this. Mm -hmm. And I I really loved last night's conversations with Alicent and with yes. Rhaenyra and with Rhaenyra and Damon. Damon finally made it out of that stupid castle. I I know. <laughs> I will that was that's my biggest gripe of this season. That man mm -hmm. did not have to be trapped in Heron Hall for eight episodes. Yeah. Like Yeah. It was it was so <laughs> I was watching the finale with my mom last night and you know, you know, she's into it. And then once it, we go to Damon, my mom was like, Oh, I'm so bored of this. I'm so tired of this. I'm like, yeah, honestly, I like at this, at that point it was too much. And you can tell they just wanted to save him. Like finally bending the knee to Rhaenyra for the finale, but it, it just dragged out. It was, it went it was on too and long. on and, and on. <laughs> We were all Caraxes. We were all Caraxes sitting on that mountain sleeping, <laughs> yeah. being like, are we ever, although I will say, you're right, because last night's visions were the best ones. We got Daenerys, we got Helena going in and having more of like, this This is not what, you know, good luck. And we finally got those like really important visions when I just honestly feel like the rest of them, yes, obviously they all have merit, but we didn't need to see him having sex with his mother. We know he has mommy issues. We know this. <laughs> we know this. We're fully aware of this. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, for me, I would have almost preferred if they left him on Dragonstone in the beginning of the season a little longer to kind of increase the tension between him and Rhaenyra. Because in the season one finale, he literally bends the knee and presents her with the crown. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the next episode, Luke dies. So that kind of changes things. But out of no, I, I felt like in the beginning of the season, it was out of nowhere that he was just like, I'm going to go do my own thing. Like, to, I always felt like he was supposed to be like a parallel to, um, to Lord Corliss, mm -hmm. where like he's basically like supporting his woman because his woman deserves the throne, essentially. And then all of a sudden he's like, I, I want it for myself. And it's not until he sees the visions when he was approaching the the um the weirwood i was like oh god i just flashed back to bran i have so yeah. much ptsd trauma. when it comes to bran all the trauma with bran <laughs> so much bran trauma but 
I mean, yeah, when I saw the three eggs and then Khaleesi, I was so happy. So happy. <laughs> uh, it was so good. It was like, uh, and then I will say that whole scene of him talking to her and when she was like, if you leave me again, I'll essentially yes. kill you. And he was like, I already tried once. I was like, oh. He's like, I love my wife. <laughs> oh, you're an asshole, but okay. Yeah. Oh, I know. I was th- I was like, oh gosh, like he's literally doing the bare minimum. And I'm like, exactly. yes, Damon. <laughs> I, I literally made a thread that was like, BRB falling back in love with Damon, going to go watch all the thirst traps again. Because <laughs> that one scene, I was like, ooh, ooh, yep. okay. But also, speaking of Lord Corliss, him mm. renaming his ship the Queen Who Never Was. I know. I have chills just thinking about it. Wrecked me. I was like, sir. Ugh. He was so in love with that woman. He loved and her And yet so he much. cheated on her. But he yeah, was yeah. so... Well, I mean... In in that realm, in that yeah. like universe, like yeah, I think the only different. man who like loved his wife and didn't cheat on her was like Ned Stark. Exactly, and Rob, <laughs> and, and Rob. I mean, yes, Rob didn't really Rob. have a, a I mean... choice or a chance to like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and also Rob is kind of like with a little asterisk because he was technically promised to another woman, and then <gasps> yep, yep, you went, and then was like, actually, I I already slept with this one, so I'm gonna I have to marry her at this point. <laughs> Oh, the Lord. Yeah, I... <sighs> this poor... The, the infidelity is so... And all of us are just like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> sure, I mean, because just... when you have infidelity next to, like, incest, it kind of makes the infidelity not seem that bad. My roommate was like, how is Jace related to Damon? And I was like, I think he's his stepfather cousin. <laughs> and I was like... <laughs> I was like, or stepfather <laughs> uncle, maybe twice removed, literally. <laughs> yeah, because if that's that, if that's Rhaenyra's uncle, so it would be his grand uncle, grand uncle. Right? Yep, grand uncle slash, slash stepfather. <laughs> this show, oh, bringing the bastards in though, freaking yes. oh, what was his? I, I wrote his name down because Ulf. I cannot stand him. Ulf coming into that castle. He is the worst, but also the best comedic relief. <laughs> yes, like, comedic relief, yes. He's like, yeah, I have a dragon. I have a dragon. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Not not last night's episode, but the um the one before it. When he's flying in King's Landing, I fully believe this man just got a dragon and went for a joyride. 100%. I fully believe. <laughs> As we all would. As we all yeah. And that dragon was like, you're mine. Human mine yeah <laughs> she gave it's him like, no choice no choice it's like oh you crushed my you crushed the the clutch of eggs but that's okay i i pick you anyway yeah. <laughs> she you know she needed someone who's just as crazy as her apparently yeah. so fair enough. i i'm not ready for all the dragon deaths and poor helena they were like we need stupid almond was like i we need you to him. take Dreamfire and fight and she's like i don't kill people he doesn't care i He's, know he doesn't care he's the worst he so literally and the fact that like he was hurting her. Oh my god, he's yeah. Pulling, he's hurting her. And I was so, like, I know we talked about this last time where I was like, I was so frustrated and annoyed with Allison. That moment where she finally stepped up and defended her daughter. Defended, yes. like, any of her kids in general, first of all. But defended her daughter, who she kind of always, in season one, she's always, like, rolling her eyes yeah. at Helena. She's always, like, seems so over her and, like, ugh, I don't like you. Finally, she stepped up and was protecting her daughter, finally, like, scolding her kids for being the brats that she raised them to be. I, oh, like, finally. <laughs> I just, I feel like, first of all, she never wanted to be a mother. I don't think Allison no. ever wanted to be a mom. Mm-mm. She's a terrible mother. It's such yeah. an interesting dichotomy of, like, Rhaenyra as a mother and her as a mother. I think the only child that she ever actually wanted to mother was Aegon. And when Aegon got hurt, she was like, well. My other one is terrifying, and you are a little bit of a disaster. Let's try and save you from my fate. But it just, it sucks. It, it, it I feel so bad for Helena because she has drawn the short end every single time. That girl has never once had something good happen to her. And it's just going to continue that way because Aemond is horrible. He is tyrannical, terrifying controlling like it's just not going to end well for any of them no no it's not i was kind of convinced uh, not convinced but i was like kind of worried in that moment um when 
Alicent was basically telling him off, that he would have killed her right then and there. You know, because... I thought the same thing. Yeah. I was like, yeah. It's like, are you going to off your mommy right here? Like, because he, and he has the mommy issues to back it up, so. God, you know. does he ever. But also her, her coming to Rhaenyra. Yes. That last, also the fact that she was wearing blue, and we haven't seen her in blue since before this all happened. It's like her mm-hmm. truce color, essentially. I was like, the symbolism here is so beautiful. And also so heartbreaking because she really thought Rhaenyra was going to be like, yeah, we can run away together. <laughs> that was the part with like at towards the end of that conversation, she's like, come with me. I'm like, were you not present for like the entirety of this? Not a, not just this conversation, but like the last season and a half. I, I, like- I was so shook by that. It's, and when she was talking about like when she was lay- laying with um, Crispy Cole and, Ra- mm-hmm. and Rhaenyra's like, oh. You laid with someone, and she was like, "I know you have too." Like she tried to turn it back on her, and it's like, "No, yep. no, no." Yeah, because her anger that Rhaenyra slept with somebody out of wedlock, that she slept with Cole, was what kind of started her whole distrust and resentment towards her. And which she which she brings up, she was like, "Oh, you know," because Rhaenyra was like, "Oh, but you always said, you know, like your your virtue, you wore it like a banner." She's like, yeah, because you, you know, you were always flaunting and disregarding, like being being virtuous or whatever. And so it goes back. To, and I think it kind of ties back also to what you're saying about the differences between them in terms of being mothers. Whereas Rhaenyra, we saw time and time again, she did not want to be a mother. She was like, I don't want to have babies. Like, it seems like so pointless that I'm just going to get married and just basically be a a, a breeding a machine yeah a machine like a breeding machine, them essentially popping them out whereas allison and she touched on this in the conversation in the finale where she was like i never really knew what i wanted i just kind of went with what was expected of me and what was expected of her was getting married and having babies um with the king because we saw her father pushing her to to do that despite her obvious like discomfort she didn't want to be, like you said, she didn't want to be a mother, Allison. She didn't want to be a mom, but she kind of just accepted that role because it was what was expected of her, but she sucked at it. Rhaenyra didn't want to be a mom and she's such a good mom. Like the, I, the amount of love and affection she showed those boys. And I think it's because she had babies out of actual love with Strong. And I think sh- she created life through love and Allison created life through hate, which shows with mm-hmm. her children. because. Yeah. All three of her kids, besides Helena, but still Helena, are just hatred. Hatred and anger and resentment. And all of Rhaenyra's kids are love and acceptance and, like, family unit based. I mean, honestly, if Aegon had died and when when Aemon, you know, burnt him to a crisp, I don't think either of those children would have cried. I think Aemon, because he probably would have killed him, but also Helena, because she hated him. When Luke died... Jace was a mess. Jace was a mess and crying. And like, that is, that just shows the differences. And it's such, it's so sad. It's just so sad. And poor Jace. Yeah. Jace just wants to be mama's bit good soldier. And she's like, no, <laughs> sit your ass down. We do not, we're not doing this. Well, it's so, it's funny that you mentioned that because he does want to be her good soldier. And like, there are more ways to do that besides flying into battle. Like that moment where Bela like finally knocked some sense into him. She was like, Jet, you're supposed to be by her side. You're supposed to be supporting her. Like, and then he finally, he spoke up like in agreement with his mom at the dinner. I was like, okay, finally, like, I get it. Things aren't exactly going the way you want them to. You want to like make a name for yourself, like, you know, distinguish yourself from every, because he has, you know, that all that insecurity about being a bastard. But I'm thinking, if there's there's already a war happening, your mom needs all the support she can get. Because if she does not win this war, she does not become queen, you do not ever become king. If anything, you guys will be killed if you lose the war. So maybe show your mom a little more respect, a little more support. Just, just a thought. Just, just a little bit. He... <sighs> I got I I'm I was really worried that he was gonna die. I'm gonna be honest. I thought if we were gonna yeah. lose anyone that episode, it was gonna be Jace. He was gonna fly into battle without 
clearing it with anyone and get murdered because he just seems so volatile that I was like, he's going to do something bad. He didn't, thank God, but I was prepared to be sad. <laughs> well, there's always next season. <laughs> it's going to, oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and then we got Rainis. We didn't get to see her claim her dragon. I'm so upset about that. Because she was wandering in the forest for two days. We finally see this gorgeous dragon, and then that's it. Yeah, I mean, who knows if that's how the season's going to start. Like her, you know, claiming the dragon, maybe. Who knows? Um, It kind of goes, makes me think of what you were saying before, how somebody's like, oh, this was like a trailer for season three. Like those last... I don't even know how long it was, um, but that last montage in the episode, when the piano started playing, I was like, oh, it's about to get good because this composer, the same composer who did Game of Thrones, when the piano breaks out, it's going to get good. It's going to get really, really good. And it, that was, it was beautifully shot. And I was like, yeah, this is the, this is the trailer for season three, essentially. This is the teaser. It's all the pieces basically showing us at the same time, like how season two was like the culmination of what we are about to see. All the pieces are in place. Everybody's moving, like everybody's marching off to war. It's so that's what season three is going to be. And I'm calling it now. People are going to be pissed that there's not going to be a lot of exposition or conversations in season three. They're going to be like, it was all action. (laughs) I'm going to be like, correct, because we set it up in season two for it to all be just war and destruction. Oh, my God. Speaking of war, I wrote her name down. This new commander, Sheriko. I call her She-Ra because I give them all names, as we know, because I am terrible at remembering them. Terrifying woman, A. The mud wrestle was so erotic and then also turned so awkward when Sweet Thailand was like, that poor guy, that poor guy had no idea when he walked into the <laughs> into this area of his world that he would be falling in love and then quickly getting yanked out of that love when she was like, I need you to sleep with all of my wives. When he's this like, boy, how many wives do you have? <laughs> When she's, I mean, I thought they were going to sleep together. I was convinced that she was going to dominate that man. But the fact that she was like, hi, here are all of my wives. We don't know how many. Five, ten, one. Take them and bed them. (laughs) Ma'am? Ma'am. Thailand is such a sweet soul compared to the rest of his family. And (laughs) he's like singing his little song and trying to be a good commander. Oh, no. (laughs) <laughs> and you know in the books she only has four lines she's only spoken of in four lines in the book oh. we don't know anything about her which i think is so interesting that they've chosen to create such a titular character with her compared yeah. to the books but unless they kill her off in season three like very quickly which you know i mean i know it's not um uh uh dave and dan doing this show because mm-hmm. they were very quick to write off slash kill off many important female characters in Game of Thrones. Yes. Um, but the franchise does have a history of doing that. So we shall see. I And which would be so interesting with it being a female lead show for them to kill off strong female characters. Because, I mean, they've already killed Renice, which they had to do, I understand. But yeah. I'm and I did. I read somewhere and I need to keep researching this. But I read somewhere that George R.R. R. Martin said that the TV show is a more accurate representation of what happened in history because the book is a is like a um a tome of what happened written by the greens ah, yes, so cause... whatever we read in the book is influenced by the greens by their maesters and the tv show is more accurate which i think would be really interesting because in the books rhaenyra is a bitch she's oh, awful no. she's mean she's a tyrant and in the show she's not which i thought was interesting when she told allison she was like the his- history is going to write you as as yes. evil or whatever as she's the villain like, as, the, as the villain, the villain. Mm-hmm. and i'm like well history wrote you as the villain so because history is always written by the victors yeah so yeah <laughs> that tells you all you need to know oh it's gonna be a disaster yeah it's not gonna be great 
it's not gonna... I, can we talk also just thinking about like how it all turns out i have been i feel like i'm overthinking it um helena's conversation like on the balcony with with Amond. i have been i think i'm overthinking it but just going over and over everything she said to him like the little sort of prophecy that she she tells him where she's like Aegon will be king again and he will sit on a wooden throne and you'll be dead you get lost in the god's eye for some reason my mind with wooden throne I immediately went to Bran because like his wheelchair is made of wood and he becomes king Ooh, you know I yes. don't I don't remember what happens to Aegon. So honestly, like when I, when she said wooden throne, I was thinking more along the lines of like he becomes like he he vanishes from from society and creates his home his own like fake throne essentially. But I like that better because she says um, Aegon will be king again. So there are, and I'm like, okay, I'm really like stretching and like re grasping at straws here because I'm like, okay, because. Wooden chair, I thought of Bran. So I'm thinking, okay, Game of Thrones time. Jon Snow's real birth name is Aegon. Yeah. I'm like, okay, when Danny kills Cersei and basically is, is the queen, even though she never sits on the throne, like she is the queen at that point. And then Jon kills Danny. There are no more Targaryens left, and he technically has the most direct claim to the throne. So I'm like, technically, in that moment, he's king. Like he is king, so Aegon is king again. But then the king, the the eventual king, like sits on a wooden chair, Bran in his wheelchair. I mean, I I, <laughs> I don't think that's super far fetched because you're right. You're uh, the Aegon sits on a wooden throne. It doesn't mean it's him. It doesn't mean it's him. Yeah. I mean, Aemon dying, yes, that needs to happen. But that, that would be interesting. I, where were they going at the end? I couldn't catch that. Where, where were they traveling off to? They're running away. They're running away. That's what I thought. They're he, just like yeah. disappearing into the wilderness. That's what I thought. Um, but here's the thing. Here's the other thing too that makes me feel like I'm overthinking it. Because Aegon, he keeps saying himself, he's like, I'm a cripple now. Like he's saying he can't walk and everything. So I'm like, so technically wooden chair could also be for him if they put him in a wheelchair like like Bran I don't know um wooden chair could also still be Jon Snow because the like the throne the quote-unquote yeah. throne in Winterfell is made of wood and that's like the only time he like really was like officially king yeah when he I'm, was king I, in the north I could see that happening either way and with the wheelchair when he was like when he was like my penis exploded like a sausage <laughs> in a fire I was like sir sir <laughs> What? Was, it yeah. came out of nowhere. Yeah. But also, probably can't walk very well after all. And his leg, no. I'm surprised his leg didn't get amputated. But yeah, I mean, that prof that would be really interesting if that's how that, that prophecy kind of spirals out. Um, because like she and Damon had both, they both just like witnessed that vision with Khaleesi. So I'm like, okay, so they're seeing kind of like into that time. And they saw... The White Walkers as well. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, so you, oh, you're. I don't know. When he said know. winter is coming, I was like, ooh, mm -hmm. I love, mm -hmm. I love every time they say that. I'm like, yes, it is. I had to like listen to it again because I was like, I love when they say winter is coming. We've never heard winter is coming in High Valyrian. Sola Arnazis, so brumi vejume. idra. Their Valyrian conversations are so beautiful. It's it reminds me of Elvish yeah. very much. Obviously, mm -hmm. that's what it's supposed to, but it's so musical and stunning. And both of them do it so well that I'm just, I'm just drop in awe, in awe. Yes, yes, yeah. Oh, you know who I'm not in awe of? Crispy Cole and his stupid little handkerchief, <laughs> his little his little <laughs> hanky with the A that he's like clutching to his face he's like sniffing and inhaling it and i loved <laughs> her brother just like threatening him but then at the end of the conversation he's like so broken and just sits down next to cole i'm like they are this two, man is a disease they are messed up those two are like a bad boy band like they are <laughs> they have just failed miserably i and he knows that it's his sister that he's been you know and he's just sitting there watching this man cry into her hanky like, that's the queen. Are you dumb? Like, queen, whatever now. Like, that's sir. 
oh my god i hate him so much so i was texting a friend about it last night she goes why do you hate him so much i was like he just bothers me <laughs> everything he does bothers me yeah no i mean especially like i feel like if you don't hate cole you didn't watch season one and you didn't watch the beginning of season two he gets so because okay we were talked about this in the last episode that we talked about house of the dragon the whole thing with like the hands all around his thing and what did we say we said he could have just done like a simple like in like engraved i don't know if engraving is the right into, yes, yeah into his thing and what did lord corliss did exactly that just one singular hand like molded into his armor very simple and but no cole's got to be like i have all these hands around my neck because i am not I am... only lord commander i am also hand of the king literally oh my and then them bringing Otto back just to put him in jail <laughs> i was like Wait. is that is that who that was in the jail yeah cell? that was Otto. i i'm looking at this man i'm like who are you yeah i could not recognize him that was Otto. Yeah, I thought they brought him back to be the hand, but I guess they ju he just wanted to put him in prison. I was so confused. Amen is a mess. Oh Amen is a mess. I thought he was he was going to try and have Helena sleep with him. Mm. I was convinced that that he was, was going to be the next in season step. one. Yeah, I was like, I think there might be some type of lore that maybe one of her kids is his, not the twins. I don't. I think they have three. I don't know. Um that like maybe the kids are his if i remember correctly i could be wrong i feel like that's how it is with every family in this show where it's like well it could be someone else's child and i feel like this fan theory is like mostly disregarded and not taken seriously and for good reason but i remember there was this theory that caitlin stark's kids are not like some of them are not ned's kids because there's like a very distinct thing in the book about how like only Arya and Jon look like Starks, while all the rest of the kids don't have like any Stark features whatsoever. They all look like Tullys. So there's like this oh. theory that some of the kids were actually um, Caitlyn and Edmure's bastards. I mean, that would also make sense because they're the older ones. And the besides Jon, like Arya's the youngest and Jon was the bastard who they, you know, so that would be interesting. That, I'm still mad going to game of thrones i'm still mad that they took away catelyn's full story arc where she came back from the dead and avenged her family and they just took that out yeah they're like yeah we don't care about like going back to what i said before they just write off and disregard female characters but hopefully that is not the case because it's a different showrunner well they can't well they can't because the two leads are females plus i mean yeah. now we also have Bela, we have Miss Missaria. Is that the the her yes. her girlfriend who's not her girlfriend, but they made out. <laughs> um, loved that. Uh, Missaria, Allison, Rainey's. We have so many strong females. Helena. If they write all of them off before they write off Amond and Almond and Crispy Cole and Damon and all of them, I'm gonna be so mad. I think they're gonna switch around the death order. I think they're not gonna go in the same order as the books because. They would lose too many big names before they, before some of the smaller people die. But see, you know what? I would almost find that interesting because that it, that was one of the problems with Game of Thrones that too many big characters, too many of the main characters towards the end of the show had so much plot armor. Yeah. So then, when they did end up dying, it was like in stupid ways, like Jamie and Cersei dying under a bunch of rubble. But then, like, in the, during the long night, like, no one really died. Yeah. Like, no, like, big, like, big, like, big main names. characters died during the long night where they were fighting the unstoppable army of White Walkers. Whatever. So, I think it would be interesting if they do, like, just kill off, chop, some, of the, kill yeah. off some of the big, maybe not all of them, but, like, yeah, maybe well, half. <laughs> and I'm also, like, where is this going to end? Are we bringing it up to Game of Thrones? Or are we to to the Mad King? Or are we only doing through, like, Rhaenyra, through her life? Because they haven't really specified that. I've heard, slash read, I should say more specifically, I've read, um, I read one article that was, like, they kind of want to do, like, an anthology where they'll have like a few seasons dedicated to specific points in Targaryen history 
but it that kind of seems to conflict with the fact that they are currently in production for the show called A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, which is about Sir Duncan, but also a Targaryen is like co-leading the show. So I'm like, if House of the Dragon is supposed to be an anthology about different points in the Targaryen's history, it doesn't really make sense they have a separate show that involves a Targaryen unless it's like not going to be focused on the Targaryen the Targaryen is kind of like a side character I'm not sure I didn't even know there was going to be another Targaryen show the only one I've heard of is the Jon Snow show the Jon Snow show I didn't even know that there was going to be another listen I love I love expanding on universes give me all the Marvel shows I don't care if you don't like them give them to me let's go I'll I'll eat them all up but they need to be about different things they cannot, we cannot have three shows about three different Targaryens. We need to have, I would much rather you give me a Robert Baratheon origin story with- um, Lyanna? Yes. I would rather you give me that story than another random Targaryen. But then that will bring in Rhaegar Targaryen. Cause oh, he's you're in right. I, the, I feel like, the, I think it's the fact that the Targaryens, because they were the king, they, it was the dynasty for basically the entire history of Westeros. Like you can't do- like Westeros stories without the Targaryens because I know I would love a Robert's Rebellion like prequel whether it's a movie whether it's, I would love to see Robert's Rebellion um but yeah that would have to involve a Targaryen yeah you know that, I didn't even think about that that's hard that is I don't even know who Lord I feel like I know who Lord Duncan is but I don't like I feel like yeah he he's a knight okay he's a as knight. they all I, are <laughs> i'm like oh no i think i remember it's like duncan and egg um that that's like the oh yes yes, yes. duncan and egg because yes. Aegon, okay. it's it's an Aegon, another Aegon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay <laughs> i just want to see the mad king be played for the yeah the mad king be played by henry cavill that's all i want the young mad king not the old one <laughs> Ooh, that's like the a young very one. interesting yes that's a very interesting casting i dig it I just, I mean, like, I him as The Witcher was, he's so good in that, that I feel like he could just really just, like, copy and paste a little bit that into the Mad King. Plus, we know he looks good with white hair, so. No, literally, when they announced, like, when you, you we first saw him as The Witcher, like, all the fan edits and, like, all the fan art of him as a Targaryen, typically Rhaegar. Um, yes. But, like, I'm like, yes, I see the vision. I love the vision. Yeah. Which, and he's, he's so much better than those exactly <laughs> we're like down the street <laughs> come to us come to come to hbo <laughs> come yes. to us like oh <laughs> <laughs> calling superman we're like hello i i mean it'd be interesting i would be down for that i would be nervous but i'd be down i i will watch this little dragon show until it ends it, again just like marvel you give it to me every sunday i will sit on my ass on my couch with my glass of wine and I will watch it. I'm also an entertainment viewer. I've told my parents this. I am an entertainment viewer. I pretty much love everything. I don't critique things very often. Um, besides like small plot things, like like Damon, sh stuff like that. Like there are things that I will critique, but I generally love everything. And you can just continue to feed me things. And I'll be like, okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I feel like it takes a lot it takes a lot for me to like stop watching a show um because i'm trying to think like very different franchise but agents of shield season season three the season three um mid-season finale that was when i was like i can't watch this show anymore what Be happened they, like they were on they were on uh that planet that like Gemma that that simmons was stuck on oh, for that's for a what long i stopped time. watching <laughs> oh did you <laughs> Because as soon as Gemma got trapped on that planet, I was like, I'm done. I can't. <laughs> well, no, it was when, um, like, like, Ward fo forced Fitz to go back there yeah. with him. Yes. Yeah. And then, like, and then I remember that's where Coulson kills Ward. Mm -hmm. But then Ward is not dead. And I... I'm like, at that point, I was like, I can't. I can't watch this anymore. Mm -mm. I was rooting for Fitz and Gemma. The, that's all I cared about was those two. And then when they became a thing and then weren't a thing and then became a thing and then she got trapped in a planet and then wasn't a thing i was like you know what <laughs> i can't do this anymore i i think the only show lately that i just couldn't get through was a good girl's guide to murder that's brand new though but i read the book 
I read the book and I will say I was slightly influenced by the book. So I was like, I don't really want to finish this, but I just, I love, I love, I will eat all the entertainment, like give it to me. Yeah. And like you said, we'll have critiques, but it's going to take a lot for us to like, just stop. Exactly. I, the one thing I wish I could have stopped was kinds of kindness, but I was in a theater and I could not, I could not stop that. And that could not was, escape. that was horrible. Oh no. <laughs> oh, but yeah, I will, I will continue to ingest this little dragon show, even though we all know it's going to be nightmare fuel and season three is going to be straight up death and destruction. Also, are we going to have to wait a year or two years? Did they confirm if it's next year or? I would feel like it would be maybe late next year because they already confirmed before season two even came out they confirmed they were doing a third season and a fourth right the writers i don't know about the fourth oh no that's that's has been hotel that's has been hotel okay yes 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 (laughs) so before even uh season two even came out they confirmed season three and so that means the writers have the go ahead to start writing and working on the third season so because typically what happened, why we have to wait so long is that these streaming services wait a ridiculous amount of time after a season drops to confirm that they are doing another season, which then means that the writers aren't working on it because then they would be essentially working for free. So, but because it happened so early on, um, I would hope that means the production can start sooner rather than later. I mean, and if that is the case um then hopefully next year god that'd be so nice i'm so tired of waiting two years for eight episodes i think even the first season of game of thrones maybe had 10 episodes or the second like i yeah the first uh six seasons had 10 episodes each come on (laughs) i'm so tired of this eight episode stuff it's not it's just not enjoyable anymore i mean it's enjoyable in the sense of like it's not enjoyable because like stranger things they're giving us what four episodes four hour and a half episodes but i think it's again i think it's again two volumes and then four episodes in each i think i just I know that wrong. a couple of them are an hour and a half and i'm like just just split those up give me two 45 minute episodes i don't know why it's more palatable when they're like here's 10 episodes that are 45 minutes instead of six episodes that are an hour Plus. Because that's essentially a movie. It's yeah. basically a movie at that point. And a movie in like mentally, it's just more of a commitment. Yeah. As opposed to like, oh, I'm just gonna watch my little my one little episode. You're right. Actually, you're very right. I didn't think about that. It is like a movie, and we're not always ready to ingest a movie. Like sometimes mm-hmm. you need something a little easier. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I mean, just having to wait so long because it used to be, and I know we're getting like way off tan- uh, on a tangent here, but this is important for everybody to know. It used to be that a a network, before the streaming services, a network would order multiple seasons of a show at a time. They would order like at least the seasons, but usually multiple seasons. And so that's why you would get a new season of the show every year because they already knew we're doing a second season, we're doing a third season, fourth that that was it was just like clockwork so every year they were working basically non-stop then it became oh no now we have to wait they only approved us for one season now we have to wait to see if it's okay for us to do a second season it's it's, it's just ridiculous it, it, it's it's all about ratings and money and like yes tv has always been about ratings but not to this insane degree yeah it was so much harder to get shows canceled and like, yes, we have more things too. We have a lot more variety now with all the streaming services, but but it was a lot harder to get a show canceled 10 years ago than it is now. I, a perfect example, one of my favorite shows, Eureka. I think that had four seasons maybe. It should have, it never, It if that premiered today, it would make it the one season and they'd be like, goodbye. No way. Mm-hmm. I think it lasted four seasons. It, it's, it's. There's so much out on the market now that they're so focused on making money that they're kind of ruining the continuation of each series. Yeah, because a lot of times, and this this happened to Game of Thrones also. Game of Thrones is very lucky it came out when it did because it came out like just on the cusp of when like shows were starting to get canceled much faster. Game of Thrones was not popular until like I feel like the third or fourth season. No, agreed. Yeah. So imagine if Game of Thrones, as we know it, like yes, it ended horribly that that's neither here nor there the amount of hype that show had 
did not hit until the third or fourth year, the third or fourth season that that show was going on. So if it aired now, never would have gotten to season two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Never would have happened. Shit's Creek is the same exact thing. Lots of people did not like the first season. A lot of people thought it was not a good show. Did not get its its correct like push until the end of season two. Really, like you. Ugh, I just. Yeah. I'm tired. Ted Lasso. Ted, La- Ted yes! Lasso. Like I don't know. How, honestly, I maybe they got like a three season order right off the bat. I'm I'm not sure because I remember it wasn't until the second season was like pretty much out. Yeah. Like entirely that people binged the first two seasons and then it became this huge thing. I was one of those people. Yeah. I didn't even really know about it until the, until season two. Yeah. Because COVID, I think that's what, that's what it was. Like everyone's like, oh, this cute little show, let's watch it. So imagine we would not have gotten the entirety of, you know, all three seasons of Ted Lasso. It, it's just like, let shows have a chance to grow, basically. Like House of the Dragon, to kind of circle it back, is very lucky in the fact that it's part of this, like, super successful franchise. And, you know, the first season did do so well that right off the bat, they were like, you know what? Here's season two, but we're also approving season three. Like, they kind of have the, the benefit of the doubt, which is good because imagine if they were just doing it, like, season by season. I feel like the ratings for season two are not as good as season one. So even though they like left it off on this cliffhanger where they're putting all the pieces together, like another streaming service might have been, if it wasn't part of like the Game of Thrones franchise, another streaming service might have been like, you know what, actually, we're going to just axe, axe the show. No season three. I think the writers probably had a a bit to do that too. And we're like, listen, this is a big exposition season. Please renew us. I wonder if they like petitioned to be like, we know that people are not going to like this season as much, but it is integral to the creation of season three. I wonder if maybe they even had any say in that too, because you're right. The ratings were a lot different this season than season one. Um, so it, it just needs, they need to grow. And this one I think grew so well. And I didn't mind that it was slow. I liked that it was slow. I got, we got lots of character development. We learned about a bunch of characters. We saw so many happy dragons. <laughs> like We only <laughs> lost one dragon this season Two. We lost two. We lost two. Yeah. We lost two. Well, um, yeah, Ra- yes. uh, Rhaenys and Aegon's. Um, yes, yes. But we also gained three. We got, Vermithor, um, Silverwing. Technically, Dreamfire is like yeah, and Sea Smoke. But Sea Smoke we had and then lost. So yeah. five. So yeah. we gained a bunch of dragons. Yeah, and I mean, and the, and that's the thing too. We got all of these dragons because in season three they have to give us the heart wrenching, like depressing. Yep, we have to lose all of these dragons. We have to lose all these dragons. Um, yeah, yeah. Not looking I mean, forward to for that. I mean, for me, and and I said this earlier. Like, I love some of my favorite parts from Game of Thrones is like the talking. I think there's it was written so well that it kind of hid the exposition like it it was character growth and it was exposition but it was also humor but it was also like plot twists and drama and i feel like this season two is a season of season two of house of the dragon is a season that you have to rewatch to catch things that were most likely missed i know i have to i know i definitely missed some things and i have to go back and rewatch it but i think we're just in this day and age where we have such low attention spans that it's so hard for a lot of people to like really absorb what's happening and like realize in the back of your mind like this yeah it's not action right now and if all you're waiting is for action like but this is going to build up that action it's going to make the action more interesting and satisfying and tell a story with that action i agree 100 percent. i'm ready for season three i can't wait I also am not ready because I know we're going to lose lots of dragons. The humans, I don't really care about. The dragons will be <laughs> horrific. Um, God, I can't wait. No, it's funny. It's funny you say that, um, that the humans, like, you, you don't care. Like, I am struggling to think of a character that I am really rooting for. Like, obviously, I want, I'm like Team team Black. I want yeah. Mira to ascend the throne. But it's, 
I can't, it's hard for me to like be like this is a character who this is my favorite character this is the character I am rooting for like and I I I, I want your take like is that intentional that like the writers are making it hard to really fall in love with these characters I think so I think they want you to have a I think they want us to watch it on a screen of like of of knowing that it's going to end in despair I think if they connect us to too many characters we're going to get way too attached and then people are going to get really extra mad when they die even though we know they all die like we still it's hard to form a deep connection with a character I think the one that has captured everybody is Rhaenyra really she's the one that most people truly connect with the character that I root for the most even if I mean and even if she died I still wouldn't be super sad but I'd be sad as Bela like that's the one character that I'm kind of like you could do this but actually you're very right there isn't a character that I fully am deeply connected to that if they died I'd be like trauma like Rob when Rob died I was a wreck that red wedding destroyed me I don't think I'd have that same like visceral reaction to any of these deaths really that's the perfect way to put it like if there were a red wedding in house of the dragon it would not hit as hard as the, the red wedding basically yeah i think they they killed off our one character that we were going to be super connected to with rainice i think killing her off was smart because she would have become our rob she would have become the one that we cling to because yeah there really isn't i mean rhaenyra obviously we all love her but i'm more connected to cyrax than i am to her i'm like <laughs> i love your dragon with her little necklace like i know i know i love also in that scene where she goes to confront Damon at harrod hall that cyrax just perches up there like what's up y'all <laughs> Like, hey. what's up everybody you try to <laughs> hurt my mommy and i will burn you all <laughs> and what's caraxi's doing just still sleeping that dragon has not yeah. seen battle <laughs> no so he's long. like he's like damon is off in another world i'm just going to take a vacation i'm gonna relax yeah I'm gonna sunbathe on the rocks like it's great oh my god i love that dragon also going back to that scene where um Rhaenyra goes to confront Damon when Damon like bends the knee and he's like the one true queen Lord Strong the Castilian of of Heron Hall he's in the back like just clapping his hands I love him so much <laughs> he is he was my favorite secondary character of this entire season he put Damon in his place more than any other person ever has in his life and I I applaud him for that I take back what I said before he is my lovable character there we go. <laughs> He, he is the lovable character. When he was like, I'm your king. And he's like, yeah, the king consort. Consort. Like, <laughs> he's like, oh. <laughs> High five. High five. Mm -hmm. I love you. You deserve all good things in your life. <laughs> yep. Yep. And he was like, I was right to message you because this is very concerning. Come with me. Mm -hmm. And then he's just looking like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. They're making up. Yay. <laughs> he ships them harder than anyone else in all of Westeros. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he gets it he does he does aw yes he is the likable character the witch i i don't care about her again that took on that took on yep. too much time it was far too long um bela also i bela's great like yeah. for me because she's the only one like talking sense into a lot of people like she did it with jace she did it with her grandfather lord corliss um she even spoke with rhaenyra at one point like giving her some some counsel, so like a, a an ear to a shoulder, I should say, to lean on. So she's been great. She's been rock solid support system for everybody. That being said, she doesn't get a lot of screen time, which makes it hard to be like you are my you are my favorite. Like I feel, I think that's part of the issue too. Not everybody, the likable characters aren't getting as much screen time as they're all secondary characters as opposed to all the main characters um, who do get a lot of screen time, not necessarily people you want to be like, yeah, besides Rhaenyra. No, that may yeah, I agree with that 100%. All right, everybody, that's it for this episode of the Phantom Report. Thank you all so much for tuning in. And thank you, Alex, for joining us today. Thank you. I love talking dragons. It's my favorite. I know. <laughs> I know. Well, when, when a trailer or teaser drops for season three, we're going to have to Yes. discuss all the theories and everything correct um tell everybody though where they can find you oh yes i am on tiktok and instagram it's alex period bow b-o-e period balix b-a-l-e-x and then i'm also on youtube it's the same username but with dashes instead of dots and uh that's where you can find me i'm there all the time <laughs> so 
<laughs> yes, and we'll have all the links for Alex's socials in the description box. So make sure you go give her a follow. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss an episode of the Fandom Report in the future. And we'll talk soon. Bye, guys.